Lord, I, I've done wrong. I can repent. I can come back to you. I can ask for forgiveness. That's what grace does. Grace give me another chance and then another chance. Some of us, uh, uh, you know, we got a second and third chance, but some of us on our 2000. 4,500, we, 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 we've, been, we've been messing up a long time, but grace was still extended. And when you can look back and see how grace covered you from then to now, we got something to be grateful for. And, and, and even at being so grateful and thankful, guess what we can say? I'm not there yet. We're not gonna keep you long tonight. I heard that over there. We're gonna try not to keep you long tonight. But there, there is a word from, from God for us tonight. And it comes from the book of Philippians. A book that Paul wrote and, and, and we know who Paul was. A, a gracious, sculptured hand in the, in the hands of God. Man that was used by God greatly. And when you get to the third chapter of Philippians, we're gonna read this verse, but I want you to, I want you to uh, read it with, list, with listening ears, with understanding heart. This is, this is what it says. We're gonna start at, at verse 12. Just three verses. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brothers, I count myself not to have apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Without my God, my strength, and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, musician. A book written of Paul by Paul. And we're going to use for a, a subject tonight. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Most, most of us, if you travel anywhere, uh, especially with kids, uh, I remember when we was going to SeaWorld, we was, we was taking them to San Antonio, and uh, we live in Opelousas, so you know, about 30 minutes you get on the interstate. We there yet? It's, it's six hours over there, and there, it's, it's something about that term, are we there yet? And recognizing that you're not. You, you drive a little further and, and, and they fall asleep, they wake up. Are we there yet? Stop and eat. They go to sleep. We there yet? To realize that you're not where you want to be is a uh, sometimes a disheartening thing. And Paul is, is writing in this, in this book, in this chapter, he says, I'm not, and for a time he said, I'm not there yet. And, and when you think about Paul, Paul was, was, was gifted a, a Benjamite, a, a, a Benjamite, a Hebrew of Hebrews. His father was a Hebrew, his mother was a Hebrew. Uh, uh, very well educated. He, stud, he studied under uh, Gamaliel, could speak seven or eight different languages. Paul had it together. Wrote two thirds of the New Testament. And when he gets to Philippians, he, he, he said, I'm not there yet. I've not yet apprehended. When you read verse 12, I'm just gonna tell you about verse 12 and we gonna, then we gonna get into it. In verse 12 he says, not as though as I have already attained Either were already perfect, but I follow after if, if that I may apprehend that which also I apprehended in Christ. What he's saying is this. He said, I want to grab a hold to Christ like Christ grabbed a hold to me. 
And if you know the story uh, 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 about Paul, Paul, was, Paul, Paul was, was something else. And he was a Pharisee, and he didn't believe in Christ. And the things he did to the Christians was, was, was hideous. But then we, when he met Christ on the Damascus Road and Christ grabbed a hold of him, he realized, he said, I need to grab a hold of Christ. And in these verses, what he's saying is, I try to apprehend him, but guess what? I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm after a God that didn't grab a hold to me. And I want to grab him just like he got me. And all the stuff that he have, he said, uh-uh. I'm not there yet. Let, let's look at, at verse 13. We're going to start with that. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself. I count. That, that I count means to, to reason. To occupy oneself with reckoning and calculation. He said, this is... this." Paul said, I didn't just sit down one day and, and think, just say, I, I, I want to get with you. He said, I've been calculating. I've been writing it down. I've been, I've been going through this, this thing. And I count myself not to have apprehended. All of the, 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 the accolades he've done, he said, I'm not there. He, he healed sick. He prayed for people. He's, he's starting all these churches. He's doing all these things. He's preaching to the, to the Gentiles. He's bringing them hundreds into Christ. And he said, I'm not there yet. What is, what is Paul looking at that he says, I have not yet apprehended? That, rap, that word apprehend means to catch hold to. Some of us know, we're we we familiar with that word apprehend. How many of us are familiar with it? Yeah, because you know, uh, uh, when, when the police get out there, we've apprehended our suspect. That means we, we got you. We, we got, we in control of you. Like we, we, he, got, he ran, but we got him. And that's what Paul, Paul said, I've not yet apprehended. I pray. I'm writing all these letters. I'm, I'm getting so saved. And we would look at it and say, well, Paul, you done done enough. You, you pretty good. Paul said, but when, I, when I, I look at how he has me, and I want to catch him the same way, he said, I'm not there yet. I'm not there. How many of us can, can say we where we want to be in Christ? I, I'm, I'm right where I want to be. I don't want to go no further. I don't want to go no deeper. I don't want to know no more. Paul said, I've not, I, I, I count myself. I, I, I sit down, I figured it out, I calculated, and guess what? I come up short. I think uh, uh, Minister Brian was talking about that, uh, something about having a budget. When you, when you count that up and you come up short, you know what you do? You recount. Oh, I must have missed something somewhere. I, I got to do this over again because you see, something not adding up. And that's what Paul was doing in his life spiritually. He said, let me see, uh, okay, I, I've learned how to pray. I've learned how to preach. I've learned how to teach. Uh, I've laid her in on the stick. Uh, 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 I've called men uh, uh, into question. I, I brought people to Christ. Let me add up, see where I'm at. He said, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Continually looking over his life and saying, I'm not there yet. How many of us examine ourselves in that fashion and say, I'm not there yet? When the, when the last time you, 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 you put your information down and say, let me see where I met in Christ. Let me see how close I am. Let me, let me see how, 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 how my righteousness line up with his righteousness. And you see, we don't do that. Because it's easier to look at my neighbor and say, I'm better than him. I see him with that bottle in his hand, I don't drink. I see him with that cigarette in his hand, I don't smoke. I hear the language they're using. I don't use that kind of language. And when I line it all up, do I say I'm all right? Or I'm not there yet? I'm not there yet. Let, he said, I count, brethren, I, I count not myself to apprehend. I haven't got a hold to him. He said, but 
this one thing I do. Ah, this one thing I do. How many of y'all ever made a choice? You, you made a choice? In church, you know, we used to sing that song, I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. But if you look down the road, there were some places you made some U-turns. You got sidetracked somewhere. But we said, you know, I'm not going to turn back. I, 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 this is my choice. And that's what Paul's saying, this one thing I do. Uh, I, always, I, I often tell uh, my wife and my kids when I'm t I say, look, when you're going to make a decision, make it based on you. You study, you read, you pray, you do whatever you got to do, because you don't want to have to look back and say, I never listened, I shouldn't have listened to him. Yes, sir. You be responsible for the decision you make. Yes, Paul said, I'm, I'm going to be responsible for, for this decision. This one thing I do. I'm going to do this. I, 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 I'm not letting nobody push me into it. I'm not letting nobody uh, coerce me into it. I'm not letting nobody uh, 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 maneuver me, take over my, my thoughts and say, this is a good idea. He said, no, this one thing I'm going to do. This one thing I'm going to do. What is it that Paul decided to do? Paul said this. He said, this is my choice. I, I'm going to do it. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. Now, when I read, forgetting those things which are behind, hmm, that's our past. Yes, sir. That's, that, that's our past. That, you know, that, that, that's, that's our past. How many of us good at forgetting our past? Nobody <laughs> wanna raise their hand either. <laughs> Paul said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I'm going to press forward. But let's, 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 let's deal with, with, with the past. Because you see, when he said this one thing, you know where he got that from? He remembered David. Uh, Psalms 27 and, and, and 4. Uh, pull that up for us right quick. Psalm 27 and 4. He said this one thing, this one thing that I do, one thing that I, I did. Look, look, what, look what David said in Psalm. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David, David had a purpose what he wanted. He said this one thing. And, and can't you see Paul sitting down thinking about trying to grab a hold to, to Christ like Christ got him. And he said, I'm not there yet. He said, what you want him for, for Paul? What, what you want to grab him for like that? That verse right there. Amen. I want to grab him because I want to dwell in God's house. I want, I want the entirety of God. You ever got a part of something that was good and wish you had the rest of it? You, you get this thing, ah, well, just give me a little piece. I, you know, I, I'm not sure about it. So you get that little piece, yes, sir. and then the person walk up and eat the rest, and then you say, I should have gotten more. <laughs> and then you're trying to, where, where you got that from? Yes. Well, well, oh, so-and-so made it. When they gonna make some more? Because you see, you, the, that desire got created in you. you. You was wondering what it was about until you tasted it. And that's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you taste and see that he's good, you know what? You're going to have that desire like David had. And then you, it, it's going to pull itself. If just one thing, forgetting those things that are behind. Let, let, let's look at our past. For, uh, he looked at from where he started from to where he was. And he concluded one thing. I'm not there yet. We would look at Paul's life and say, a life well spent. He was, he was, he was good. Even, even right here in Philippi, you say, Paul, you ain't got to write another book. You ain't got to send another letter. What you said there is enough. You, how many quotes y'all can think of that come out of Philippians? Anybody? Oh, where, my, where my Bible readers at? Where? Somebody read the, read the Bible? 
let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's in Philippians. Y'all see, every time I come up here, I try to make y'all study your Bible so y'all know some, some things, so y'all get some of them, them quotes. But what things were gained to me, I count loss. Y'all know that one now. Because, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of scriptures in Philippians that you would know, rejoice always. And again, I say, rejoice. It's, it's good. Paul had all of those things, and you know what he said? From the beginning, when Christ saved him on the Damascus road to right, right where he is now, he said, I'm not there yet. And then he dealt with his past. He said, uh, forgetting those things which are behind. Now we're going to look at two dimensions of past. Two dimensions of past. We got a past that, uh, that we've done to other people. Oh, it's quiet in here. Yes, I, don't, I don't know what y'all pass. I, I can't name none of them. Y'all good. I got my own. Yes, but the thing is about past that, that we've done to people, we know the word for that. Amen. That's behind me. That's over with. You know, if, if, if you going to keep holding that, that's on you. But I done, I, done, I done prayed. I done left it in the hands of the Lord. Lord. That's, 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 that's done with it. God has cast that. As far as the east is from the west, because you did that to somebody else. We, 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 that, 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 come, we, you got to learn how to let those things go. We, we, we family, we friend, let it go. That's because you've done it to them. Now let's, let's look at the other side of it. What they've done to you. What they've done to you. It, 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 it puzzled me that Paul said we got to forget those things which are behind. Because it, it's, the past is a, is a strange thing. Now, the, the past that I've done, I'm sorry, that should be enough. You know, I didn't mean it. Let's go on. But what they've done to me, every now and then look like I can hear it coming back. It's like footsteps to make you. you look back because you was, you, you was broken for what they did. Yes, they lied on you and, and they knew it was a lie and it cost you your job. And every time somebody mentioned that job you, you, you lost, you look back because you can hear your past yes, coming back. The hurt they did the things they caused you to lose. Broken relationship they, 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 they caused you to go through. For some reason, it's hard to forget that. The person that you was, was friend with, they, they, they brought strife in between and y'all had to separate and look like when they mentioned their name, it makes you look back because it's something on the inside. I can easily forget what I've done, but the hurt that they've caused me for some reason, it keep coming back. You can, they, they, they hurt you and all of a sudden, when they mention their name, it's like your, your blood pressure go up. It's like you, you start, your heart start beating fast. You, you're trying to think of scripture, but the thought of what they did keep coming back. And you know what you say when, when, when they try to talk to you, somebody else mention it to you? Brother Jim, you say, I can remember like it was yesterday. I, I, I haven't forgot. Forgetting those things which are behind, what I've done, I can forget. But what others have done me, for some reason, it keep coming up. Even, even in relationship with husband and wife, we, we, they can get together, we can talk, and then they'll say one word and you say, they're going back to that again. They, they're going to bring it up again. And, and now you're, you're nervous, you're, 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 you're getting anxious, you're thinking what you're going to tell them because you know where, they, where they're going with it. It's your past just keep coming up behind you. And Paul said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. You want to forget, you want to forget your past. And then I see something don't sound right about that. Uh, in Acts 26, 
verses 10 and 11. Some, some of y'all gonna remember this, this, this verse. Acts, well, I don't know, I just checked with y'all. Y'all wasn't no Bible reader, so. Uh, we just gonna have, we just gonna have to get the sound booth to pull it up. But in Acts uh, 26 and 11, the story is, uh, is about Paul. Paul is going to preach to Agrippa. Y'all remember that? Okay, we got three. And, and Agrippa was the king. Agrippa said, Paul, tell, okay, state your case before me. And Agrippa started telling him these this things. Look at what he says. He says, things which I had also did in Jerusalem and, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Verse 11. Paul is telling Agrippa the things that he done in his past. He said, I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blasphemy and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. I chased them down. And when I caught them, I made them see they didn't love Jesus. Paul trying to get Agrippa, and when you get to the 28th verse, you know what Agrippa said? He said, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul gave his testimony. Wait a minute, your testimony is your past. Come on, brother. What you've been through. So I had to, I had to, I had to go, we had to go back and look at this again. Paul persecuted the Christians, but in telling his story to Agrippa, he went from the beginning. He went from when God met him on the, Christ met him on the Damascus road to how, how he was persecuted. He went through the whole thing and he almost persuaded him to become a Christian. He went back to his past. So I had to go back and read this again. I see Paul can't be talking about the same thing. He's talking about his past, but he's talking about it in a different light. Because let's look at what the past can do for you first. The past is important because the past can influence our future. The past can influence our future. When, 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 you, when you look at your past and, and, and you look at the, just the mistakes you made, the wrong turns you took, the time you were supposed to be quiet and you open your mouth, when you get to that point again, you know, you say, hmm, we played this scenario before. And when I got here, I opened my big mouth. This time, I'm gonna keep silent. And guess what? It influenced the people around you. You say, ha, because I made that mistake this time, I know not to step in the same hole this time. It influences our past. So Paul couldn't have been talking about that. Not only does it influence our past, but it can be a reminder of God's grace. It reminds us how many times, even when we was lost, that God stepped in and gave us grace. When, 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 when we... Nobody in here, I know none of y'all didn't drink or nothing like that. But when those people that used to drink couldn't remember how they got home, couldn't remember where home was, woke up somewhere they didn't know where they was, and by God's grace, they were still alive. People that was, that was, that was just doing drugs, one after the other, this gets you so high, I'm going to try this and get higher and then get higher till he was almost out of their mind. And God's grace stepped in and said, I'm gonna bring you right back. You, Your past can, can remind you of how God, even, even, even to, to those of us who say, I, well, I never drank, I never smoked, but you was lost. You was, on, you was on that same road traveling to hell just like the drunkard. Even though you wasn't cutting up, or oh, I, I never went to the dance, I never went to the party, I didn't have to worry about getting killed in the club or nothing there, but you were still lost. Because you were still a sinner. But grace found you and gave you an, enough opportunity to say, I can receive him for myself. 
You, my past tells me that God showed me grace. He gave me enough, enough, enough grace to say, well, Lord, I, I've done wrong. I can repent. I can come back to you. I can ask for forgiveness. That's what grace does. Grace gives me another chance and then another chance. Some of us, uh, uh, you know, we got a second and third chance, but some of us on our 2,000. 4,500. We've we, we, we been, we been messing up a long time, but grace was still extended. And when you can look back and see how grace covered you from then to now, we got something to be grateful for. And, and, and even at being so grateful and thankful, guess what we can say? I'm not there yet. I haven't, I haven't thanked him enough just for saving me. I haven't thanked him enough just, just for keeping me out of, out of my own way. Because a lot of times, you know, I, that was kind of, I got in my own way. Because you see, once you go to school a couple of days, boy, you smart, yeah, you went to school. You got that diploma. And then you go to college, ooh, you can't touch this. Then you mess up. And then you say, man, that was dumb. With a college degree, you still mess up. Masters, PhD, guess what? That don't stop you from sinning. None of that don't, don't, don't it don't stop you from messing up. Because, because your mama was a Sunday school teacher, that don't mean nothing. Your daddy was a deacon, a preacher. That don't, that, that don't mean nothing. Grace still had to cover you. And when you can remember what grace brought you from, that, that, what, how does some amazing grace? That, that's what saved. It was amazing how his grace stepped in and got somebody like me. A wretch, lost, confused, don't even know better. And think you're smart, think you're intelligent. Till you realize that grace had to reach out and get you too. Yeah, 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 the past, you, you need the past, it's important. It influences our future, it's a reminder of God's grace, and it's full of helpful lessons. How many of y'all can look at your past and say, that's a, well, a lesson well learned? Yeah. And, and you know, when, 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 you, when you read Philippians, the first part, I think it's in chapter two or one, they got a, a verse in there just by itself. It say, beware of dogs. That's something, huh? And some of them got in front of some dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beware of dogs. But it's a lesson learned. Cause, cause, and I don't know why they do that. People always say this. When they got this ferocious dog and you see him coming, you want to get out of the way, you know what they tell you? Don't worry, he won't bite. He won't bite. He got a mouth full of teeth. Why are you telling me he won't bite? How, how does he eat if he don't bite? Oh, don't worry, he don't bite. Nah, beware of dogs. No, that, that's in flip. Write that down, Brother Carl, be, beware of dogs. Because you see, you out there all the time. No, then people tell you, oh, don't worry about him, he don't. Don't believe that. A lesson well learned. Even in our, our, our relationship, our marriages, you know what? We done messed up. Even in our, our raising our kids. Putting on, you look at it and say, ah, I'm not going to do that no more. And sometimes you, you do the same thing. Oh, I, I don't know why we do that. We, we, we make the same mistake over and over. We look at our kid, and, and, and my, hope my, my kid's not in here. But we, 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 we do that. We say, well, this one's going to be different. You know, look, look, what, look, what, you know, look what your sister did. So we went, okay, dad, okay. Same thing. Another one come up brilliant, they're going to do the same thing. A lesson well, for some reason, we overlook the lessons until they become our past. And then we say, hmm, a lesson well learned. If we could get it when our parents were telling us, this, this, this for my, my, my friend that's, that's my number one uh, listener, if we can get what our parents telling us right then, that's a lesson we won't have to learn because we're going to take their lesson and apply it and we're going to be good. It's like having something in, in, in the middle of Watch it, you're gonna stump your, you gonna, don't stump your toe in there. How would you say, cool, ah, listen, listen. And then you can avoid that. But we're not there yet. Paul said, I'm not there yet. After all the knowledge he had, 
the understanding of God's word, the reaching out to people, the, the, the past that he said, I'm forgetting. But Paul, you didn't forget your past because you used it in Acts. So it's not, that's not what Paul is telling us. When I, read, when I read that first, I went back to verse 13. He said, I count myself not to have apprehended. I didn't grab it. I haven't grabbed hold to God like I want. And the verse uh, for, after that, he said, in the same way, he said, I'm reaching for it. He grabbing and he reaching, but this verse here, he said, I'm forgetting. What Paul is saying, that he said, I'm not, I don't want to forget my past, but I'm not going to grab hold to it. I'm not going to grab hold to this past that when I was a sinner, why would I want to grab that? I was lost. But I'm going to grab this past. I can use it for a lesson. But I'm not going to grab hold to it. Because you know what, what happens when you grab hold to the past that's in there? You hear that same song that, 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 that you heard, you say, oh, yeah, I remember that song. And then your mind goes, yeah, we were sitting over there. And you, oh, wait, oh, oh, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's going to take you back there. And, and, and Lucy married and married to somebody else. Now, I wonder what Lucy doing. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to take you back. Because you grab hold to it. I, I, I hear the past, but guess what? I'm not going to grab. Paul said, don't, go, don't grab back hold to that. Because if you grab that thing, it's still hot. It's going to burn you. It's going to mess you up. It's going to pull you off track. It's going to get you off the, the, the place where God has you. Don't grab hold to your past. He said, I'm trying to grab hold to Christ. And I'm forgetting the sinful things I've done behind me, the bad decisions I've made, the mistakes I've made, the times I feel, I, I want to let that go. I'm going to use it for a lesson, but I'm not going to grab a hold to it. Because you know why he can't grab a hold to it? If he's reaching for Christ and he letting go to the past, and then the, the next part of that verse is, I'm reaching forward. How many hands you got? You, 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 you can't hold, I, 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 if I'm holding Christ, I can't hold the world. If I'm holding on to Christ, I can't hold self. If I grab hold to Christ, I can't hold on to the flesh. He's trying to tell us that's something you got to let go. That's something you got, that's your, that, that past, you remember, you know how we used to say that was the good old days? They wasn't that good. They, 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 they wasn't that good. They, they, was, they wasn't that good. Now, things was cheap. I can give them that. They had some things cheap. But at $1.25 an hour, it's about the same. You wasn't making no $10 and $12 no hour. $1.25. And 10, 10 hours a day, that ain't much money for no, that $1.25. But it was cheaper. I was telling my, my son, I said, I remember we go to the bread stand, you can get five loaves of bread for a dollar. Five loaves of bread. A uh, 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 six pack of Coke was 30 cents. The whole six pack. You can get the short bottle all along. And then they put them tax on it, you had to come with 32 cents. We thought they was robbing us. Now you're stopping some of these stores, you got one 16 ounce or $2.89. For, for, why, why is that much? Well, it's in the little freezer. I got a freezer at my house. I, can, I don't need to give you no $2 for that. The past is it, it, the past, but it wasn't that good, especially if you was lost. If you, it, it, it felt good to your flesh, but, 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 but in your spirit, you, you, was, you was messed up. Don't grab hold to the past because it'll pull you back. It'll pull you back, even, even, even the things that hurted you. It'll pull you back to where you, you see that person again and, and you mad at them. And they, you, you pass them in mean mugging and they want to, what, what, I, what I did? I'm back in the past. You pushed me down in the third grade, I ain't never forgot it. You're 50 years old now. You gotta let that, you gotta let, but the past will pull you. So, and, and, and help, help. We, got, we got a strange way of doing things when we get hurt. I'm a, I'm a, when we get hurt, you know, I can see somebody else talking to you and you hurt me, and as soon as you leave him, you know what I'm gonna tell him? You better stay away from him. You know what they done me? What, 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 what they did? Yeah, when I was in the third grade, they pushed me down. And, and we gonna tell that story why, like it just happened. We don't wanna see nobody 
talking with somebody that doesn't hurt us. And Paul says, I haven't, I'm not there yet. I haven't grabbed hold to, what is it Paul, Paul said? He, he's saying, I want everything that's Christ. How many of us want all that's Christ? Now watch before y'all raise your hand because we got some more coming. Because so, you, 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 you know how we are, we like to, you want everything for Christ? Just, just one little thing. You want, you want to lift it up. Because you know, it, it costs something. It, it costs something. Paul, Paul says it's going to cost you something. When you think about Paul's life and he's trying to grab hold to Christ, get, Paul was whipped, I don't know how many times, cast in prison, shipwrecked, beaten, uh, bit by a snake, all these things. And Paul, Paul said, I'm still after. Beaten and put in prison for preaching the gospel. And, and Paul said, I'm still after him. I, I, I'm not, I haven't grabbed him like I want yet. He got me fully, but I want him just like he got me. And that's why he said, I'm reaching forward for those things. What you want, Paul? I want to know him in his love. I want that. I want to know him in his grace. I want that. I want to know Christ in his patience. Because you see, if we had that patience, we could, we could take a lot of things from our, our spouse. I'm just going to say that generally. Because we got the patience of Christ. You know how, how patient God was? How patient Christ was? To, to, to know people hating him, and he still had, I'm going to bless him. I, I'm going I'm to die for him. I, I, this is what I, I came to, to do for him. And Paul said, I want all that of Christ. I want to love like he did. That's a hard one. People that done done you wrong, yes, let you know that they don't like you, and they didn't like your mama, but, and then he say, love them. Love them anyway. Paul said, that's what I want. I want the ones that persecute me, put me in prison, whipping me. I want to love them enough to, to, to lead them to Christ. But I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Not only that, but Paul said, Paul said, uh, uh, why well, I asked y'all not to raise your hand too fast. He said, I want to suffer with him. I want to be a partaker of Christ's suffering. How many of us want that? Yeah, I didn't figure nobody here ain't going to come up with that. I want to be a partaker. But we, we, now, we love the Lord now. We love the Lord. But, and you know what you tell yourself? There's just that old flesh acting up, keeping me from raising my hand. But you're scared. If I, I'm just throwing that out parenthetically. That ain't for none of y'all. But you're scared. Because when I say I, I want to suffer with Christ, ooh, what that mean? What, what, what that mean to suffer with Christ? What if, he, what if he tell me to go somewhere I don't want to go? Get to going. What he say, if you want me to give something I want to keep, give it away. Do you still want to suffer with Christ? I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to give you your answer. Y'all going to pray about it. Because suffering with Christ, the mind, the body tells us this is going to be rough. This is going to be tough. This is going to be there's going to be an uphill climb. And you know what we say? I'm not there yet. That's what we, we, we all saying. I'm, I'm not there yet. Brother Anthony, we're not there yet. We, we trying, we, we see the goal, but I, hold, I, I'm not there yet. And, and you know what we do that? We, we do that with a lot of things. Yeah. God, God uh, 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 tells us to love those who despitefully use us. And you know what we say? I'm not there yet. I know what the Bible say. I know what, what God is, is telling me, but I'm not there yet. Look, I know they hurt you. You, 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 you a child of God. You got to forgive them. Go, 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 you be the bigger one and go apart. Oh, I, I'm not there yet. Pastor been teaching for the last month on, on tithing, and, and you look at your budget, you look at your money, you say, well, God going to have to work on me because I'm not there yet. We have, a, we, we, we have that, that mentality to, to tell ourselves, you know, I got to back up. I, I'm, I'm not there yet. That's our excuse yes, sir. for what we don't want to do. And yet, we say, I'm, I'm, Christ, I'm all in. We've been, we sing songs about I'll praise you. Do what you want to do as long as you want to. <laughs> Y'all better quit lying up in there. <laughs> we, when they start singing that, you just might have... I'm not there yet. 
Because because we, we speak in words that gonna have to come, we're going to have to give answer to. Amen. Lord, use me in your service. Just let me pick which service you put me in. Because you know what? I'm not there yet. I'm not there. I, I, I'm not there yet to let you have your way in my life. I want all of Christ if I get in trouble. I want him as a healer. I want him as a deliverer. I want him, I, I, I want him as, a, 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 as a confidant. I want him to be my friend. I want him to stick closer than a brother. But if you ask me to do something, what's wrong with us? I'm not there yet. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep going. I'm reaching forth. I'm reaching forth for everlasting life. I'm reaching forth for uh, what, what God has for me. Now, when we come, we come to, the, to, to this last verse, this, this last 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, when, you, the, the, when he says, I press, what does that tell you? You got some opposition. Other than that, you just say, I walk. I just walk toward the prize of the high calling in Christ. I, I just get it. But you see, you got your flesh to deal with. The same flesh that tell you, I can't let God use me like I want. That's the same flesh that keep you going places you shouldn't go, saying things you shouldn't see, doing things you shouldn't do. He say, I press. You got your flesh, you got the world, and you got Satan. Guess what? All pushing against you. It would be easy if I could just reach out and catch God's hand and, and, and me and God be singing kumbaya all, all the way to glory. But you're going to have opposition. And that's Satan. He, he, he opposed everything God, God he's going to push against it. So Paul said, I'm not just reaching, I'm pressing. I got to push. I got to put my shoulders to it. I, I, I'm, I might be slipping on my, but I, I'm pushing. Because if I don't press, guess what? He going to stop me. If I think I'm just going to walk, like, like what the song say, why should I be lifted to the sky on flower beds of ease while others fight and pay the price and sail through bloody seas? Y'all can write that down if y'all want. That ain't mine, though. <laughs> but but that's, 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 how, that's, how, that's what we want. I want the, the flower bed of ease just just rolling through life. Well, I'm, God already knows what I need. Lord, just answer my prayer. You got to press. You got to press. Lord, you, you know I, I need a job. You got to press. Lord, Lord my, my body is sick. I need it here. You got to press. You, you want to say that I'm sick, Lord, heal me. I guess he's going to. No, you better work on that faith. When you get the faith right, you can, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to just lay hands and keep on going. Oh, you're all right. And keep on going. But to get to that point, you're going to have to press. Amen. And that's what we have a problem with. Because it's, it's kind of like work. It's kind of like getting up at weird hours. God ever work, woke you up about 2 o'clock in the morning? You're tired and he wake, wake you up and he's saying, pray. Oh, Lord, oh, no, oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, Lord, watch. <sighs> Go right back to sleep. Go right back to sleep. Because you don't know how to press. You don't know how to get, when, when he wake up, you don't know how to get up. I, I, don't, I don't know what this is about, but I'm going to pray. That's pressing. I, I don't know who need me, but I'm pressing. And then, then you ask, God, I don't know who, who this is for, but I'm, I'm, I'm pressing. And, and when you start to press like that, guess what? The enemy going to back up. But if, if you're not going to press, he's going to surround you. He's going to make you, your life hard. He's going to make your way difficult. Because you know what? You don't know how to press. You don't know how to... Oh, I'm tired. But let that man call you. Look, you can get some overtime. Come on. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Before you was tired. You, was, you were, oh, I, I don't think I could take another step. Oh, you're going to get time and a half. I'm coming. Because you know what? You know how to press for the material thing. But we don't know how to press for the spiritual thing. You, 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 you got to learn how, how to press. He said, I press to the mark. That's a goal. What's your goal as a Christian? What's your goal as a believer? Well, you you got to have a goal. If you, if you just, well, I'm going to go to church on Sunday. That's going to be, no, you got to have a goal. Paul said, I press to the mark, toward the mark for the prize. I, there's, a, there's a prize I'm after. I want to hit the mark. 
That, there's a mark set, and I got, I got to hit it. I know what my goal is. Some of us have financial goals. We want to be out of debt in two years or three years. I, I want to have this paid for in six months. I want to have, you, you got those goals. And guess what? That's why you go to work so much. Oh, if I, go, if I do this time, there's overtime, I'll pay for this and this to take care. And, and you done figured it out. You done, you, done, you done counted it up. You done calculated it, like, just like Paul did. You done cal- but what you're calculating spiritual? What, what, what part of that in your life you're saying, mm, I need to read more. I need to study more. I need to learn about this. I, I need to investigate. I need to calculate where I am in Christ. Do we ever do that? Ah, I'm going to take the shortcut. I'm going to wait till I get to church and hopefully they tell me something I need. And there's no pressing. And you look back sometime and you say, me and you started at the same time. Why, why are you way up there? Look at their hands. They press. They press. They took some time and put their knees on the floor and what? They pressed. They prayed. They did the things that it took. And the prize for the, the higher calling, the higher calling, all of us have a calling in Christ. <clears throat> Every one of us have a, a, a calling. And you got to realize that where you are is not at the pinnacle. You're not the best at what you do. Now I know in the news, well, he's the best at what he do. And, and I, I was listening at the uh, news the other day with, uh, we know some of us remember when Pete Maravich was a, a, a basketball player at the LSU. He just take the ball and flip it up and look like it would go in every time. But this, little, this girl from Iowa, Kate, Caitlin, some, she didn't pass this record. We saw uh, uh, Steph Curry shoot them three pointers, shoot it and turn around before the ball get in there, he gone. And he drop in there. But she didn't pass him. And guess what? Somebody gonna pass her. Because you're not the best, the greatest at everything. And you got to keep going What for a higher call. But the higher calling is more than that. Because you know what? God put all of us on a road. But sometimes we don't like to stay in our lane. We see, we see God moving somebody on, in, in, in this field. And he called you to be a, a prayer warrior. But you want to jump in the singing lane. He called you to, 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 to be a, a teacher, but you want to get in the ministration field. A high calling in, is in what God purposed for your life. I give you a good example. I give you a good. Christ had a high calling on his life, the highest. With all his power, with all his knowing, he could have stepped out of his high calling. But his calling was to come and save a lost and dying world. And guess what? He stayed in it. Yes, he stayed in the road for the higher calling. He, well, what, I'm against, what, I, what I gained from that, he ended up sitting on the, sits on the right hand of the Father, still interceding for us, because he stayed in his calling. Yes. We've all been called to something. Yes. And your goal is to be the best that you can be in your calling. If it's teaching, if it's reading, if it's kids, if it's singing, if it's playing, whatever it is, stay in your calling and be the best. Paul was a, was a preacher, a writer. He was the best, one of the best in the Bible. But he wasn't better than Christ. He took what Christ said and, and, and put it plain for us to understand. He put it what, what Christ gave him and he wrote it out in books so we could read it. But he didn't take none to go. Because when you look at that, what did he say? The high calling of God in Christ. In Christ Jesus. He said, I'm staying in my lane. It's not all this I'm doing. It's, it's, not, it's not me. Because guess what? I'm not there yet. Amen. All I'm telling you is what Christ have deposited in me. And that's what God calling us to do. Tell others what he deposited in you. What God deposited, that's what you want to share. And when, when, when you get to that point, then you can say, I'm not there yet, but I strive. I kept striving. I kept stepping. And I, 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 musician, y'all can come because I'm, I'm, I'm about to close this up. When he, when he wrote this book to the Philippians, Paul was writing, telling them how great Christ was. They could see Paul 
but they didn't see Christ. Christ was letting them know what you see here was because of him. He's saying, what, 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 what you see in me, he said, all that I gained, my knowledge, my education, I count that all as loss for the excellency of Christ. If I can get what Christ has, I give all of that away. And we look, man, you can speak eight different languages fluently. You write, you can, you, you preach, you, you, you lay hands on, you pray, people get healed, you got it going on. He said, I, I, what you see here, I give it away. Because you, know you know why we say that? Because in, in that, uh, the previous verse, you know what Paul said? He said, in my, in my desire is to be with him. But it's more profitable for you that I stay here. Paul said, the only reason I'm here is to tell you about him. Because if I could get with him, I'd tell you bye-bye. If, 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 if he would tell me you could come now, I would go now. Amen. And what, Christ, what, what Paul was saying, he said, this is how good Christ is. Yeah. It's no wonder that Christ, uh, Paul got so many people to come to Christ. There, it, it, it's no doubt how he got so many churches started. Yes, because he denied himself to lift up Christ. Amen. And the thing about it, you know what he said? I give, I give, all, I give it all away just to know him in his fullness. What if God could reveal to, to you all of him? How wonderful that would be. You could see, really see what love really is. Amen. We share a relationship with each other and, and we say, well, you know, I love you and, and kissy kiss and huggy hug, we good and kind. But to see a perfect love, we saw it in Christ. Because when we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's a perfect love. A love that, why are you doing me wrong? I'll still die for you just to save you. And, and, and that's why he said in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is because of what Christ did at the cross. He didn't have to do it. He had a high calling to put nails in his hands. That's, that's, that's why we say, well, I, I let Christ do whatever he wants to. Well, he had nails in his hand, nails in his feet. He let him press a crown of thorns on his head, pierce himself in the side, because the higher calling was to die for you, a sinner, a person who loves sin until Christ turned you around. So I say to you this evening that we finished if you had to do anything, if you had to say anything to Christ, you could say, I'm sorry. Lord, I was a sinner. And the bad part about it, I enjoyed my sin. But now I realize what it cost. I realize what I've done to you as a sinner. And I want to confess that I've done you wrong. I've walked away from you when you was walking toward me. And Father, I ask you to forgive me. Because everything I heard about you, I believe. I believe that you lived a perfect life. I believe that you died in my place. I believe that you rose on the third day. I believe that you sat on the right hand of the Father, interceding for me still, still answering my prayer, still hearing my call, still coming to my rescue. And I, I want to accept you as my savior because I believe everything I heard about you. And I'm asking you to come into my life. That's what we see as lost sinners, that I need you. Every hour, I need you. And as I press toward you, like Paul, I'm not there yet, but I'm trying. Understand my trying and forgive me for my falls. Forgive me for my shortcoming. Strengthen me where I'm weak. Build me up where I'm torn down. But let me continue being after you. That's my prayer to God. That's what I would say to him. I want to seek you like no other. 
and let you, because you became my savior when I didn't even know I needed saving. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Let's give God a hand, please. I, I thank you all for tonight for coming in. Remember that we're not there yet, but don't ever stop trying. Don't ever stop pushing, don't ever stop pressing. If we stand to our feet, we'll dismiss, and I'll leave you with this prayer. Father, as we leave this place, we, we thank you for coming in and sitting in our heart, touching our minds, leading us, guiding us, and directing us. Lord, we pray that this, your word resonate in our heart, that we realize that we're not there yet, but Lord, we never stop trying, we never stop pushing, we never stop pressing, because we want to be in your presence. We want to be in glory with you. We want to see the streets that's made of gold, of gates of pearl, and the 12 foundations of 12 different stones. But most of all, Lord, we want to see you. We want to see the one who died for us, Lord, as we leave this place, but never your presence. Cover us, keep us, walk with us. Let us get back home and find things better than when we left. Well, Lord, give us an opportunity to share your gospel with somebody that some soul might be saved. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank y'all, love y'all.